Hello everyone. Hey, I'm Jim Kalk and my wife Betsy Havens. We are very happy that you're with us today in our studio here in Georgetown, South Carolina. We are very excited to be doing this uh, video for you all and for the Burris Chapin Art Museum in Myrtle Beach, which is a wonderful, wonderful uh, art museum that we encourage you all to participate in and, and to support. Now, Betts is going to be demonstrating first, and I'll be demonstrating secondly paintings, but right now we're going to give you a brief uh, tour of our studio. Yes. Well, today I'm going to focus on my black and white painting, and the way I do it is very rapid, um, but I think about it a lot, of course, before. It could be weeks that I've been thinking about a painting, but once you're ready to do it, it has to be fast because it's gestural painting. Before we do one of these, we're going to get right here with my, let's <clears throat> see if I can show, show it to you. Studio. Yes, I will. Uh, with my paints, and we're going to come back to this, okay? We get right here to the paper and the brushes and the water and all the black paint. But for right now, so that you can see where we are, we're on the Sandpit River. And we love it here. And we come out to the garden and have a lemonade out on the terrace or something, watch the boats go by. And then we go back inside. And of course we create many, many, and you can see around the studio what is being created, stuff stacked up everywhere and we just don't worry about it. And we go all around. You can see the work that I've been doing. And there's our supply shelf. And there's Jim's mammoth, big, it handles 12 feet uh, easel. And then we come back to uh, look at the other side. Supply shelf there, beautiful, got tons of stuff in it. My grandfather's old desk. And this is where I will be painting. down just a little bit. So you can see where I'm working. Okay, I'm so sorry, I have to take a minute to do this. Okay. You can see the paper and you can see my palette and the water. I love this jug. I'm um, porcelain jug. You can see my brushes. I can't see you. There. There you go. Put a little black paint out. Okay, and I've got my spritzer with water in it. We may or may not use that. We'll see. I have my Sharpies, three different ones. Oh, and I have my favorite thing, China marker. I bet you used the China marker for a million things. Little brushes, these are little brushes. But I'm going to do what I love to do in the mornings when I come in. And the important thing about this is you get your juices running. And you come in the studio and you're like, yippee, I gotta go, you know, I'm gonna do all these great, and you do all this before you do anything more serious, you know. This one you can see the channel markers on it. See that? See the channel markers on there? Okay, so let's start with this one. And I want some, I'm gonna do ladies again. And here we go, there's my black paint. And we'll do a few ladies with some water. Need to use some water now. You do your little lady like this, and you got her going down the street, and oh my goodness, she's having such a good time. You do another little lady and draw her. You know, you always make, make the, don't make the heads too big, you know, that's an important piece. And you can do, you got, that might, he might be got a guy. You know, ladies are fatter in the hips, guys are wider in the shoulders, you know, that's how it goes. And here you go with this one. There you 
you go. Now, I have ignored her legs, but it reads, you know, it reads the legs. Can you see me? Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Now, here's the next one. And we're going to do this. Let's get this guy, or lady, let's get him leaned over. He looks like an old man, doesn't he? <laughs> leaned over like this. Get him like that. And... Oh, look at there. He's moved his leg. What's going on there? Go back to this one, do a little more. Now, these are drying over here that we've just worked with, okay? Those are drying. Well, I want a little more contrast. So I'm going to go over here and put some more black paint in a specific place and make a little more contrast. Maybe a little more at the top of his head. There. And he's contrasted with this one, okay? But if you wanted to have less, you just go in and gray it down a little bit. And there you go. And you can give him some legs whenever you like. Okay? And then you can give some buildings in the background if you want. You can do a building there, another one there, and another one over here. Now remember later you're going to go back and work with this, you know. But these are just, and you may not, because this might be just a study. But see, I'm having fun. Here's the main thing. I'm playing. I'm having a really good time. And what happens is, all of that kind of spirit, let's put a little boy down here. He's got a bigger head because he's a kid. You know how to see how he already looks like a little kid. Kids have bigger heads. So you know that, so you go make a kid with a bigger head. But you, you know, when you're, now he's walking with him, maybe we'll let him be kind of reaching out for him, okay? Reach out for him. But you, when you, when you are, when you are working with uh, with with speed and happiness, then and you know you're excited and you're just having a good old time, then you uh, it comes across it comes across in your work. You know people see that. <clears throat> now let's go back. We're going to look at this painting right here, and we're going to go back to the big board. And I'm going to adjust just a little bit here so that we can see. And I want to say this to you. I have already put a black dot in the very middle, which, by the way, looks lower because it always does. But this is the middle. It's the middle this way. It's the middle this way. And I'm going to do my speed painting in just a minute. So usually I'm dancing around. I have music on, but we don't do that today. But, you know, when I get in the mood and I'm going and what have you. But today, we're just going to pick up the brush and it's in a big old bowl of black paint. Can you see it? And, that's it. Billy Miller says hello. Edith says hello. Hey, Edith! And Carolyn Rue says hello. Hey, Billy! Hey, Carolyn! And Billy wants to know when you decide to use color. When do I use color? Mm -hmm. Some usually in this situation, I don't use any color. I just stay with my black and whites in this. But yeah, I can. Well, as an example, right here, you know, there are tons of them in color. Okay, that's just some people in color. But I don't do, today. No color. Okay, so here we go, and we're gonna we're gonna be fast and speedy. be what you want okay it can be anything you want but I'm finished I have picked up on the quadrant or if you do this which Jim's gonna explain my figure is where it should be relative to the size of the canvas and so those are things that you you know you do you think about uh, you don't want it right in the middle so now we're going to turn to Jim and Jim's work is going to be uh, on his giant 
easel. Yeah. And this easel, we just all love talking about it. Yeah. But I'm going to get it. Let Hughes me. Hughes easel. They're custom made in Florida. And they're counterbalanced. And they move from top to bottom so easily. All the way to the ceiling. Uh oh. And then they move from left to right. Or even down as you go diagonally. So this is a wonderful easel for me because I paint such big canvases that when I'm painting on a large canvas, I can paint the top of it by pulling it down and I don't have to climb a ladder like I used to. But I want to talk a little bit about um, painting and what we're going to be doing today. I'm an abstract painter. I have gone through all of the, of the academic part of drawing and painting still lives over the years and uh, love to do all that and still do that sometimes, but I really love to paint the abstraction. Now, when I see nature or anything, I look for the abstraction in it. And to find the abstraction, you have to reduce what you see down. So I'm reducing it down to line, to shape, and to color. And I'm gonna come up with a very abbreviated portion of whatever the object or the landscape is. Uh, the next thing that, um, that I want to tell you is, and I'll use this painting to demonstrate it, uh, I jury a lot of shows and uh, one of the common faults I see in the paintings are no center of interest. Now, every painting has to have a major center of interest and it has to have a supporting cast. It's like in a play, when you're looking at a play, we always have one lead actor. We don't have two lead actors, it's always one. And if you're in a crowd of people and everybody's talking, then no one is heard. It's the same thing in a painting. If you have agitation and busyness going on everywhere, the painting's not a failure because no one is heard. You have to have a main center of interest in your work, and you have to support it with a supporting cast. I usually do the largest center of interest on, I always use the medium and then a much smaller. So those are the three different uh, areas that I really go for in a painting, small, medium, large, with the largest would be the center of interest. Uh, the next thing I want to mention about that is the center of interest is what's going to take the viewer and you, you literally are forcing the viewer to look at that spot. And if that spot also should read from 30 to 40 feet away so that the painting is reading comfortably. Now, I'm going to take this off and I'm going to put a pretty large canvas up here and show you my thought processes and share with you the thought process I have as I paint something like this. They're always painted in, in three steps. The first step is when I play when nothing matters. It's like I'm playing, playing and I'm really having a good time with playing and feeling it out. Nothing's that important. The second step is, is tightening up a little bit and bringing some focus into the painting uh, color, trying to break it together. And the middle section is where you usually find a lot of uh, of uh, ugliness going on with the work. And then the third section is when you straighten it all out and bring life into it, and you bring life into it. I always start with uh, a charcoal, and I dance like Betsy does, we dance to it. I have no ever con conceived a pre-planned pre thing that I'm going to do. Everything is extemporaneous. When I start seeing in an abstraction something that I say is a tree, or an apple or a flower, I flip it over, upside down, where I can divorce myself from that. But I would like to show you what I do. If I divide my canvas in half, horizontally and vertically, I come up with four quadrants. I want my center of interest in one of those quadrants, and I always establish that quadrant. We're going to do it up in the top 
left quadrant today. I've got charcoal, and right now I'm just playing. I'm playing, having a good time. I dance around even from outside here, and I want my center of interest to come into here. And I want to do some colorful writings, and I want some calligraphy. I want to say art museum. Another piece of charcoal. I want this to be the major center of interest here. I want a smaller center of interest here, and I'll balance it with a very small uh, object there. All right, and we'll just for the heck of it, we'll say painting. Now, all this will pretty much be covered up, but this allows me freedom and movement and I can dust off a little bit of it to get something going there. The next thing I like to do is take my, uh, this, is, uh, this is regular semi-gloss gel. Gel is uh, acrylic gel. But my brush, I'm going to um, stand back as far as I can and I'm going to cover what I just did with the gel. I'm looking for design right into the gel. Looking for design. What I'm doing is I'm getting the darks darker and the lights coming up to a middle tone and then the white of the canvas is the white. So I'm getting three values here moving together. And this gel gives me a wonderful support the paint on when it's when it's still dry. Always off the paper dancing over here. This shape continues over here, so let's just dance off the page with it and pull it back on. This dances off the page here. So let's dance it off the page and dance over here in the over here to the left to the right side of it. So here is my main center of interest. Uh, this will be softened a little more and a little more right there. Let's see what we're going to do here. I'll put a little bit here. The next thing I like to do is I like to get really far away from my uh, work as I work. I'm going to do a little line work with maybe a black acrylic ink. Uh, I take my brush, I go out in the yard and find the stick. I've used friction tape or electrical tape and I take my brush to it so I can get really far back as I work this and a little bit out of control which is what I want. I don't want good control at this point. I am putting my ink out, wetting my brush and let's see, getting far enough back and, and doing some line movement in it the center of interest here. Put a little more of this in. I'm going to really pop that out. A couple of spackles. The rhythm moving from bottom to top with connections. Secondary third here and let's take it off the page here twirling and off the page today I need to make that a little darker now I, I'm beginning to see a landscape in it like I'm seeing trees over here and the sky and the, the march and everything but I'm going to get that out of my mind I don't want to continue to see that all right that's that part of it. Uh, I'm having to do this rather quickly. The next thing I do is try to establish some color. And I will take uh, I'm going to take some red and some yellow and make me up a very strong color. How much longer do I have? Well, you've got about 10 minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. 
use very wide brushes. These brushes are extremely wide. Usually I let this dry a little more, but I don't have time today to let it dry too much, so we we'll just go with the flow. I'm still in kind of a play stage. At this time I decide maybe what colors I want this painting to be. Now that's that's another hour-long topic because I will go with a color wheel and I will um, decide like red and green, for instance. I will say then I want, I want it to be 80% red. I want to accent it with 10% green. And then I want to use some colors that are foreign to the color, like maybe a, 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 a violet or purple color and, a, um, and maybe an orange. Anyway, I'm mixing up a red here. An orangey warm red. And I'm putting it right on to give me the feel that I'm introducing some color. Billy and Miller would like to know where you get your wide brushes. These wide brushes, I ordered them from either Dick Blick or Jerry's, and I think this one I did buy at Hobby Lobby. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Warmth is coming into this, and I'm trying to always balance my warm and cool colors. If you put something here, never isolate it. You got to bring it over. And I always work in triads. Color here. Most of the color there. This is important to me. This is a spray bottle, which lets me have a fine point that I can start getting some some control drips here going. Let's try this. Let's try the black up here. And let's give it a nice, uh, I want this black to, to run. See the runs that it's making? Beautiful shape. Great. Now, in addition, we mentioned some greens. I'm going to go ahead and maybe establish some greens, and I'm going to establish these first with ink, acrylic ink. Red and blue, I mean green and yellow. Take a brush about the size of this round brush. I'm going to, I, and for my, for my white, I use the gesso. It's creamy and it makes the best white I've ever had. Um, Jim and Alexander would like to know if you're using oil or acrylic. Acrylic. Okay. For the, mainly for the sake of speed and drying time. Okay. I do paint in oils and the show at the museum was totally oil. We're using acrylic. I have some very gray green here that I just want to establish to get some of the green moving. All right, everything's quick and easy, and like I said, in thirds. I want some, I want some major interest right in here. And I'm going to go ahead, since I have business here, I'm going to go ahead and put some rest, resting right in here. I don't want everything to be speaking. Let's rest this right here and let's pick them back up on the business a little less than this, but here and maybe down here. That's this we want very business center of interest. Uh, this is a very important thing to do right here. Okay. Spray bottle. All right, we've got about 10% charge on that. Okay. Well, that's the step that I go through for the first time when I'm playing. Then I develop this step further. It's the middle of my painting. And uh, I also then uh, 
come up and um, after I develop this, go through what I call the ugly stage. With the ugly stage, it lasts a little while, and I will finish it up by refining. Great. And I do like to, to use my brush like spackle some paint. Paint goes everywhere. As they say, it goes all over the studio, it goes all over me, and sometimes it even gets on the painting. So this is kind of how we work. That's why the studio has a floor like we have. So anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.